Hi, it's John here from the Home Recording Studio and today I want to talk about convolution reverb and I'm going to show you two free and super easy to use tools that will help you create your own impulse responses. So here we go. Recently, I was looking for an easier way to integrate my Behringer 636 analog spring reverb into my studio setup. Uh, it's a lovely sounding reverb, but it can be a hassle to root audio out of my DAW and then record the wet signal back into digital again. That is where convolution reverb can help. So if you create your own impulse response of your particular hardware effects unit, then you can use this with a convolution reverb plugin and turn your analog effects into digital effects. It's been a while since I looked into convolution reverb and when I started looking for video tutorials, I couldn't actually find any that uh, addressed my specific needs. You can use Logic Pro if you've got it, and you can use a plugin called Space Designer, which comes free with Logic. This is Space Designer. And if you want to create your own uh, impulse responses, then you just have to go here and click on Open IR Utility to help you record your own impulse responses. But after you've captured that impulse response uh, in Space Designer, then you can only use it with Space Designer. It's not compatible with other convolution reverbs. So I started looking for an alternative and I was aware of um, some inbuilt options in other doors such as Ableton and Reaper, I believe. But what I was looking for was an app or plugin which wasn't specific to any particular DAW. And I was looking for a free tool also. Here's what I found. The first piece of software you'll need is IR Capture by Wave Arts. And they also make a legacy app called MLS Tool. But I found that IR Capture is more up to date and much easier to use. Once you've downloaded and installed it, you will need to open the IR Capture standalone application. First, set up your audio interface in the audio settings. And so make sure you've chosen the correct input and output. And also make sure that you only select by ticking the inputs and outputs that you will be using to send to your hardware reverb and also to capture the signal from the reverb. At the top right of the interface, you need to select how many channels that you're going to record. So I'll only be recording one channel and playing from one channel also. And that's because the Behringer Spring Reverb that I'm using is just a mono reverb. In the type box, make sure you've got sweep selected because I found that works much better than the MLS version. Under amp, choose minus 12. Uh, now you may need to adjust that depending on the output from your hardware, but I found that was the setting that worked well for me. The gap setting wasn't really relevant because I'm only recording one channel. So I just left that at the default of uh, 0 0.5 and the time in seconds will be the length of the reverb that you want to capture. You may have to guess this first time around and then tweak it later, but I found five seconds was enough for me. Further down the interface, you've got an option for automatically crop, but I left that unchecked because I found that it didn't work very well for me. The threshold I left at the default level of minus 42 decibels. Uh, output files, set that to single. Um, normalize output, you can check that. And the delay, I just left that at zero. Next, you need to specify the folder where you're going to save um, the files that it captures and then also give it a name. 
and the format I chose was WAV 24 bits. Before you click start, just make sure that you have your hardware effect unit connected to your interface correctly. Make sure you are getting a signal sent to the hardware effects unit and that there is a signal coming back in as well. So for anyone interested in how to hook up the Behringer Spring Reverb, if you look at the back of the reverb unit, you've got several different input options. I use the auxiliary input and I'm using the 500 MV option that is being fed from my universal audio interface and I'm just taking a line out of there and I'm feeding that into my audio interface. So that's it. Today's video is sponsored by Tangerine Sounds, your go-to source for high quality, unique sample packs. Head over to the site and explore a hand-picked collection of boutique sounds, all curated by yours truly. Tangerine Sound specializes in hip-hop, lo-fi, boom-bap and vintage-inspired samples, perfect for adding character and vibe to your tracks. You can also grab the free virtual instrument, Lo-Fi Vibes. It's available to download right now, no strings attached. And while you're there, don't forget to sign up to the mailing list for exclusive discounts, new drops and more free stuff. All right, let's get back to the video. Then you can just hit start. The app will play back a frequency sweep and record the results back from the reverb unit then you should see a message confirming that the recording has finished. So you can see the recording that was made and that is in the WAV format. So after you've captured the IR impulse response, you're going to need to use that in a convolution reverb plugin within your DAW. There are a few different options for convolution plugins, but this is one which I recommend. It's called Convology XT, and it was actually created as a collaboration between Wave Arts and Impulse Record. So I believe you can get it from either website. Um, I'll leave links to that in the description below. So you can download this free plugin and install it. And here is the main interface. And you do have a good factory library of presets that come with it. Um, however, if you're using your own impulse response, you have to go to the file browser tab and find your impulse response. Then you can create a preset by tweaking some of the options that you have in the user interface. So under the time tab here, I found that altering the release time and the hold time um, really gave me some good results. And then under the frequency tab by adjusting the low end so that a lot of the low end was filtered out. Then this also helped with the sound of the reverb. So lots of other parameters here to change if you want to change the sound of your reverb. But let's just have a quick listen to how my spring reverb sounds. So we've got a guitar sound here. Let's just bypass the reverb. <laughs> So that's just the dry sound, but let's switch on the spring reverb. So by altering the hold times and the release times, you can really shape the reverb. Let's try it with a percussive sound as well.
Then when you're happy, you can just hit save, give it a name and you've created your own preset. Now, like I mentioned, there are other options out there for free convolution reverbs. So this one here by Melder Production Audio is called M Convolution EZ. Use that in a very similar way uh, as Convology. Uh, the other options are Space Designer will accept WAV files. So you can simply just drag that in. And there you've got your spring reverb going through Space Designer. And finally, another free option is called Free Convolve. And that's by Ven Audio. Drag your impulse response in. Or just uh, use the browser window. And then you've got wet and dry controls here. It's a bit of a simpler interface, but all those... Um, Free plugins work really well. The great thing about Convology XT though is that it comes with a bunch of free impulse responses. If you look under the factory library presets, you have choices from classic hardware um, to plates and also real spaces. You even get a 636 spring stereo reverb as well if you want to check that out that's it from me um have fun with convolution reverb hope you enjoyed the video and i'll see you next time <laughs>